Shalom Kharim. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, and you guys are all familiar already with the uh, Keith Scott or Keith Lamont Scott incident in North Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina, the shooting of the black man that the family has said that he was unarmed, that he only had a book. The police said he was armed. The family in one recording were the daughters of, uh, of Mr. Scott. Uh, were very out, upset and outraged. They were videoing the police officer that so many of us see in the scenes there of their video that's wearing a red shirt. They are saying that this white man killed their daddy and very upset. And guys, I certainly can understand the outrage of the family, the outrage of the black community uh, based on the information that has been shared. I know even his wife was there at the scene claiming and screaming at the police officers, he won't hurt you, he's not armed, etc. And I really was believing at first that this was the case, but I did work for uh, law enforcement years ago. I won't say exactly where, but I did work for the law enforcement uh, community. I have been trained in evidence, etc. All these things I have been trained in. Uh, I'm not going to use a mouse. I don't know how well you'll see this. I'm going to play the video for you because there's a couple of things I can show you uh, from being trained to work with evidence and specifically because I do photography and uh, video, I've been trained in both of these as well. So I understand how to look for evidence. And what I'm going to show you is not conclusive. Uh, so I can't say it from a quote unquote professional aspect. I'm no longer uh, working in this field but I am going to point out some things that might even help uh, the, uh, the Scott family uh, for Mr. Uh, Keith Lamont Scott, which again, my condolences to the family, uh, to the community as a whole for the loss of this man's life. But there are several things that I found in the dash cam footage that's been released as well as the body cam. What you're seeing on your screen right now is the body cam officer, uh, the cameras there, very close to, must be mounted near his head or something. This right here is the side of the officer's head. Uh, you can see the officer, he has his gun drawn, that's his hand. This is his uh, uh, semi-automatic weapon that he's carrying. This is Mr. Scott right here. The light kind of blurs his head a little bit in this particular stilled image of the video footage. But the one thing I've noticed is consistent in both videos is the fact that there is this black thing around his ankle here that is not on the other leg there. These are his white tennis shoes. Uh, it is consistent with what we would consider to be an ankle holster for a, for a weapon that you wear on your ankle. ankle. Uh, I did wear one as well as a police officer. Uh, Off-duty, I always wore an ankle, ankle holster with a semi-automatic uh, 380 uh, on my ankle, besides my regular service revolver that I wore as well. Uh, and But what's very interesting, and I'm going to show you in a little bit where I blew the image up, his hands are very close to his body the entire time. But right here, you can see a barrel. Right here, right where his hand uh, is at there, it is very obvious it's a barrel. I have enhanced, uh, not enhanced as far as changing the video, but I took, I copied the image, I enlarged it. I'll show that to you here in just a moment on the screen where you can see that it is a barrel. But let's back up a little bit because I, like the family where they had said the uh, white man killed their daddy, I had really begun to believe that maybe this was so. So we're going to play the footage, but I want you to realize that yes, the following video contains graphic and disturbing images. Uh, but and, and, and I want to point out some professional things that the officers did do as well in this. But again, I, I know it's very difficult for the family, and my apologies to the family that this happened. Uh, I know it was a split-second decision, but I'm going to show you some things that I want you to notice here. So let's let's let the video roll here, and I will walk you through it as we see what's happening. This is the uh, dash cam. The officer's pulling up. You hear the audio on it. They're screaming at him to drop the gun. Now watch. Let me pause it here just for a moment here. I want you to watch. Right, the, 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 these officers here, this one here, this officer here is the officer that was driving the police car that pulled up with the dash cam. This guy with the red shirt is the one that the uh, wife of, the, of the, uh, Mr. Scott, she believed that he shot him. 
Uh, and I can understand why. You have to understand, everything happened in a split second. Once the gunshots were fired, his gun comes up. But I'm going to show you, his gun never comes up until after the shots are fired. So the mother mistakenly thought he shot him. Uh, and also I noticed on her camera footage, right before the shots are fired, her camera goes down. She's moving. I think what happens is she may have turned around away from it for a second, backing up, but when the gunshots fired, she turned back around within the split second. All she sees is that this officer with the red shirt on his gun is up, assuming that perhaps he shot him. But for the sake of the Scott family, I want to show you, and by the way, right here, this is the, uh, this is the car that Mr. Scott is sitting in right here, and he's going to get out of the car in just a second here. So let's, let's watch and listen. Let me get the volume turned up here for you just a little bit as well, guys, just so we know that we got a full volume. Um, okay, the volume seems to be all the way up on my end there. Let me just minimize, make sure we have the volume here all the way up. Let's go back out again. All right, let's watch now. Now, she's saying he doesn't have a gun. Now the officer with the, with the uh, body cam on is going to come around the back of the car that Mr. Scott is in. That's why we see the different position. Watch what happens here. He's getting out of the car now. Notice I stopped it for you. He gets out right. He's, the door has opened now. He's fixing to get out of the car. Okay. Now, the right hand here does have something in his right hand. I can tell that there was something there when he first got out from the dash cam. Okay? But he keeps his hand kind of close to him. He comes out. He's facing. There's officers all around this man. Uh, you don't see the black officer, though, until right just moments after the, web, the guy with the body cam comes around. Then we see the black officer for just a brief second. All right, now watch, he's walking backwards. At that moment, this is where, and you don't see the officer very well now with the, with the body cam on, but he looks over towards the officer with the body cam. But watch this now. Okay, he still has something, if you'll notice, there is something in his right hand. He does have something there in his right hand. The, the officer in the red shirt, and the other officer, there's the officer with the body cam on, is right here on the back side or the front side of that pickup truck. All right, but listen now as the gunshots go off. All right, I paused it again. You heard the gunshots go off. Notice the red, the officer with the red shirt on. He's wearing a bulletproof vest. He's moving quickly, but his hands are still down. And Mr. Scott is actually already falling to the ground. But you're going to notice something else. I'm going to back it up just for a second here. I want you to watch Mr. Scott when the first shot is fired. Watch his head. Okay? Two shots are fired. The first shot caught his attention and he looked to the left. The second shot hit him. So he may have missed with the first shot, but the second shot actually hit him. He grabs his chest, but he looked to the left. The officer with the red shirt on, he's not, he's actually hitting the chest. He couldn't have hit him in the chest from that angle there. So I don't believe that the guy with the red shirt on actually shot him. Even as the shots are going off, his guns are down. His hands are down to his side. The other, the, uh, Mr. Scott is starting to fall back at this moment, and then he hits the ground. Now watch. Now his gun will go up. See? Now his gun is pointed. And I think this is what happened to Mrs. Scott. I'm afraid that when she turned around and said, started screaming, did you shoot him? Did you shoot him? All she could see in her view, because she's directly off to the side, is the officer with the red shirt on, who his gun was down during the times uh, uh, of the actual shooting itself. All right, so that's what we have there. But then you come up to here. We're going to get out of this here. Let's come to the, to the part here where, uh, and by the way, you see also, you'll see that after he shot, he reaches in his pocket to hand them something. Uh, it's not a gun or nothing. He's actually pulling gloves out uh, to hand to them as they're working with him. Okay, that's what you see there. Uh, and then we move along just to save time here. This is the officer's body cam here. Uh, he's wearing the body cam. Let's move along. He comes running up to the scene. He's coming to the back of Mr. Scott's vehicle. There is another officer right there. Um, 
I don't know. I can't tell from the body cam if this is the black officer that was there or if he is a white officer. He can't really tell. Looks okay. He may, yes, this may be the black officer right here that was there as well. Okay, he's just a, he's kind of light skinned from where I can. It's hard for me to tell there with this body cam. All right, but then he begins to go around. And this is where I this is what I begin to see there as he came around, and it's only a split second. You got to really be watching at this point here. Mr. Scott has already stepped out of the car. He's wearing a white ball cap. He's got a black shirt on. Well, it appears with some some type. Of, by the way, so you can see him. This is his white ball cap. His shirt, black shirt with like some writing on there. It could be a different color, but from the body cam, this is the kind of the color it looks at. The officer with the body cam, his face, his gun in his hand. His hand is right there. Okay, now, here's where we start seeing here. This is where I first begin to notice what appears to be something strapped to his ankle there. His pants are pulled up. Uh, when we would pull out a, or when we had our holsters on, anytime we had to use the gun, our pants would be, get stuck on top of the holster itself. There is like a, maybe like an orange writing on there. Modern day holsters, a lot different from what I used many years ago. So it could be something like that. Uh, again, I can't say conclusively that that's exactly what that is. Now we are there uh, at the 20, 223rd second frame in this. This, is, uh, this one was lit, loaded up by Global News, their, their particular footage of it. Uh, but again, it's kind of hard to tell what you have in this frame here. It's too blurred in the image when it's because, of, because of the officer moving around. But I played around with this quite a bit, moving around. His hands kind of concealed a little bit, but he's got his hands very close to his side. And even here, in this image here, uh, you can see the outline of something that's very sharp and straight there. Typical, you know, I know some people say, okay, well, it's a book. But on the one image here that I want to share with you in a moment here, it definitely does not look like a book. Uh, let me go to the part, though, after he's down. I want to show you something else. Listen to what they say here. Listen closely. Well, I can see his hands. Gripping his hands. Back up. I got right gun. Back up. Back up. One thing I do appreciate about what the officer said right there was, get some gloves, we want to hold the wound. And that's something that I noticed that he said. Now I want to show you, here is the, uh, the image here. I copied the screen on here so that you could see this better here. And uh, this, let me just back out a little bit on the size here. Again, this is the body cam, the officer with his gun in his hand. This is Mr. Scott. Uh, in this frame here, you see what appears to be maybe an ankle holster over, right over his tennis shoe. His blue pants are pulled up. And then you see something in his hand right here, right next to his body there. Now, I will say, like the, like the, even the family has noted in this, he doesn't appear to, he's not doing anything aggressive. But let me blow this up even closer here for you. Now, as we get really close, now you can see it's too, too small to be a book, uh, and it's too tightly wrapped around right here. It's right there. It's in his hand. You have a little bit of curvature in there. Uh, unfortunately, friends, now as you get bigger in this here, now you can see it a lot better. You can see the curvature here, another part right in here in his hand. And, you know, friends, I, what I'm showing you right here is it's undoubtedly he, does have, he is armed. Uh, and, and my condolences, like I said, to the, uh, to the Scott family. Uh, I know that you need to have this brought to, to rest as well. And I don't know if anyone will ever notice this like I do. But like I said, this was my specialty at one time years ago. And I really was beginning to believe. And let me just blow this up a little bit larger. I was beginning to believe as well that uh, the man had been shot intentionally. But as I said, as I've showed you here, it definitely was not the guy with the red shirt on that you see in the family videos. And now that we've blown this up even larger here, uh, let me get the picture out of the way there. You can clearly see there is something that's black in his hands right next to his waist. It does curve in. It goes out. That's not the shape of a book, guys. Unfortunately, it is the shape of a gun. And, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. 
I'm sure that if the, you know when they get professionals analyzing this, you're going to find similar to that. Uh, so you know they say he wasn't acting aggressively or nothing like that. I know one one story said that he went towards the police. The police were all around him. He's definitely going towards somebody regardless. But I you never see his hands come up. But that's the danger when you've got a gun in your hands, and at any moment the gun could come up. You know, and if he com if he comes up with the gun and, and and he shoots before you do, then yes, there is life endangered. Uh, I, I can't say that they acted wrongly in this case here. Uh, as much as I hate to say that, guys, I, I believe that what happened, uh, it's a tragedy. But yet at the same time, Mr. Scott had put himself in that position. And, you know, for his wife did say that he had a brain injury. It is confirmed that he did have a brain injury a year earlier. Uh, maybe the meds or whatever that he was on could have contributed into him uh, doing something foolish at this time. I, I don't know the, uh, the full case about this, but I wanted to share this with you guys so you could see for yourself uh, that indeed he was armed. Uh, from what I can tell in the videos here. He was indeed armed, as the police have said. It was not the white officer that the family claimed in the red shirt that shot him. It did come from a different direction. Uh, it's actually, I believe, in the video of Mrs. Scott that you see the black officer, other than the, 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 uh, the, the body cam that does seem to be that he's there at the side of the car at the time. The, the black officer, he does make the decision that you know he has to take Mr. Scott down and to, to the tragedy nonetheless. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Erev